Welcome to this session of the Fusion 360 Roadmap Update. Uh, we are really excited to be here and uh, walk this through with you guys. I think we'll, there's a lot to cover, so um, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, and actually, before we do that, let me just introduce who is on the call on the Autodesk side. Uh, I'll start with myself. I'm Kaching Song. Uh, I'm uh, the product ma uh, community manager <laughs> of Fusion 360, but I'm also here with a number of our product managers. Um, so uh, would you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, let's start with Shane. Sure. Hey, everybody. My name is Shane Pritchard. I'm a product manager uh, focusing on data management. And so uh, prior to that, I was in customer success for about four years. I trans transitioned over. I'm in Portland uh, along with Kaching and excited to kind of share some things uh, with data management later on. Hey everyone, Olivia Struckman here. I'm a product manager um, on the drawings and documentation um, spaces in Fusion 360. I've been on the team now for just about two years prior. I was working on the manufacturing team uh, with Tim here, uh, normally based out of our Pier 9 Technology Center when we're in the office, um, but based out of uh, the Bay Area. And I'm uh, excited to share with you today a lot of the uh, projects that we've been working on um, in drawings. There's a lot of exciting new features coming your way after after some lull in development. So excited to share that with you today. Hey everybody, I'm Tim Paul. Uh, I'm one of the product managers on the manufacturing team. So I'm super excited to share with you guys uh, just a little slice of of a lot of the goodness that we're doing in uh, in manufacturing. So yeah, I've been for a while. I've been making parts for a long time and. Uh, it's fun to to see all the things we need to bring to you guys. Let's get uh let's get started. The first thing I want to call out is that we're doing this with you guys here live. But if you go to our blog, we have our roadmap update posted on our blog, uh, and it's available uh, to everyone to to see. So if you want to go back and refer to what we talked about, dig into some more details in other areas, uh, feel free to go to our blog and look for that. It's the roadmap update 2020. So. Um, yeah, go check it out. We also have our roadmap update from past years, so it's all it's all on our blog. If we take a look at where we were, uh, you know, towards the end of 2019 and kind of the beginning of 2020, all these things were available to you and are still available to you to use. So, you know, we introduced edit in place as a preview, um, and now it's actually out of preview, so it's in full production. We introduced electronics design, letting you design PCBs, 2D PCBs over to 3D PCBs. Uh, we introduced e-cooling for electronics as an advanced simulation tool. We also have uh, outcome cost estimation with partnership with Aprori for generative design. So as you're, as you're looking at different uh, designs and uh, picking the ones that really suits your needs, now you can also look at your costs and what, which iterations and which designs cost more or less based on your constraints. Um, we also introduced sketching tools in 2D drawings, uh, uh, drawings and Olivia will definitely you know, talk more about that. And then also uh, introduce a number of advanced manufacturing capabilities, steep and shallow as an extension, uh, a rotary, four axis rotary. Um, so there's a lot that, that is already available, but we're, always pushing the envelope and we're definitely giving you more. So we always like to start with the, the areas of focus that we're doubling down on this year. And this lets us frame exactly where do we wanna put our efforts. The first thing is we wanna mature our core functionality that already exists. Uh, there are areas in the product that we totally see that, you know, are still need some maturity and that's something that we're absolutely focusing on. We're also trying to develop more advanced capabilities in some of the areas that are pretty well rounded. Uh, and then also, you know, building more intelligence, building more automation into some of the environments and workflows so that it's just more easy. It becomes more easy, more efficient for you to, to do what you need to do, right? So these are the three main areas that we're trying to double down on and focus for, for the year. Let's begin with sketching and modeling, because this is, this is like the foundation of Fusion 360, right? You can't, you kind of have to do this in order to get everything else done. 
So one of the things that uh, is actually available now in the June, uh, since the June update is ruled surface. So now you can um, select a chain of edges or a, a, a certain number of edges, um, give it a distance, give it an angle and create these surfaces uh, as a ruled surface. So this will, this will definitely you know, help a lot of you that are working with surface models and do a lot of surface modeling workflows. Um, so this is now, this is, we, we set it in the roadmap that it's coming and now this is available. Uh, the next thing is parting line draft mode. So, you know, especially for uh, creating consumer products where you've got a plastic enclosure and uh, you need that parting line to be very clear and to design it very well. Now in the draft command, there is a parting line mode that lets you draft the angle uh, and uh, move the parting line, essentially, uh, in terms of you know, how, how many degrees it is. So uh, we're continuing to, to improve this experience, but now this is also available in Fusion 360. We also recognize that in the T-spline, so this is going to more of like freeform uh, sculpting workflows, that the um, uh, T-spline edge matching to like a surf, to like a sketch profile isn't as accurate uh, or wasn't as accurate, but we've tweaked the solver and the, the underlining mechanism. So now um, the, the edges will match very accurately to the sketch profile and the curvature. Um, so really, uh, really good to see that happening. And then, and then also, this is a big ask from, we've heard this from all of you on the community uh, forums, you know, talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, the ability to put text on path and put it on a circle, put it on a curvature. Uh, the reason why this took so long to, to do is because we actually completely revamped our, our text, uh, the way that the text command was written. Today, text command is pretty uh, restrictive in terms of how you use it. But as you can see here now, the, by completely revamping it, it's a lot more flexible. It also allows us to build more on top of this, uh, this architecture. So we're super pumped to, to get this in your hands. So this is not available yet, but it's coming. We're working on it. The other thing is uh, emboss. This is another thing that you guys have been asking for for a very long time, and we totally get, uh, totally get that. Right now, there's a number of workarounds you do with emboss, but uh, what we're working on is giving you an actual command that lets you emboss a pro sketch profile or um, actually also uh, sketch text, you know, emboss text onto your, your designs. This is very common to a lot of our products, and we want to make it easier for you to do this. So both emboss uh, functionality are coming. So along with all that, uh, we also have a number of other things that we're working on, like better DXF SVG support. This is you know tweaking how we handle SVGs so they're so they're more uh, predictable to you know what you expect it would be when you when you bring it in. Uh, we're also tweaking the the experience around 3D sketch improvements so you know also just better predictability around where the the coordinate system is how how it moves when you start to uh infer the different sketch lines um and then also introducing a chamfer tool for sketch because i mean we've got a fillet tool in sketch why not have a chamfer tool in sketch so that's also coming for sure Okay, so we're gonna shift a bit and transition more to electronics design because this was a big thing in January when we introduced the, the, the whole workflow of being able to design PCBs and make it associative to your 3D models and 3D PCB. So one of the things we did in June that we talked about in our roadmap is made a lot of improvements in the polygon pour uh, experience. So what this is showing is is using polygon pour to pour a layer on top of your PC, PCB. And you know, typically on a PCB board, these could be a different color, some of them are black, some of them are green. Uh, so uh, this allows you to kind of draw a polygon and that would just be the pour itself. Um, the other thing that it would, it would allow you to do is when you move a, uh, a component of, uh, of your PCB board, that pour automatically updates and updates along with the traces. 
So, so it just makes it easier for you to, to make changes without worrying how it's going to affect the poor. And then also you can cut out the poor uh, for you know, areas that you need to kind of inscribe a serial number or a version number. So just gives you a little more flexibility and, and control over you know, what, what the poor actually uh, takes over and what it leaves out. So another thing that uh, we're, we've introduced in June is the ability, ability to derive PCB from a sketch. So I don't know if you're familiar with the whole derive workflow, but uh, usually it's with, with uh, 3D models in Fusion. But now you can take a sketch from a 3D model that you've designed in Fusion and say, that sketch is now going to be the shape of my PCB board. You know, you can see kind of the story of tying everything together and making it associative. That's, that's what we want for Fusion, right? We want, we want it all in one, and we, we want that solution for you to, to use. Also, we, we've uh, enabled the reuse of existing 3D models for footprint. Um, so, you know, if you're using Eagle or uh, if you, you have already 3D models available, you can reuse it as a footprint. And then also quick route, we've got a quick route command. Uh, now supports multi-layer. So before it was only restricted to one layer. Now it supports a number of different layers that you can, uh, that you can select. Um, so you will see, you'll continue to see more enhancements and improvements in this area because you know, with consumer products, electronics is such a big part of, of product development. So we want to give that solution to you. Here are a number of other things that we've, uh, we're also working on. You know, edit in place for 3D PCB with parts list support for drawings, uh, non XYZ plane support. So you can, you can expect to see some of these things coming as well. I'm not gonna go too much into detail because we've got a lot to cover. These are, this session is like the highlights, right? The, 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 the highlights. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to generative design. At the beginning of this year, we've, we've announced that we partnered with ANSYS. Uh, and ANSYS discovery so that we have a more direct path from Fusion to ANSYS. And that's something we're going to continue to, to uh, develop on and make that, make that path more smooth, you know, have better, better uh, outcomes. So that's something we're definitely focusing on. Uh, we've also heard a lot of feedback from you guys around you know, giving manufacturing constraints and improving uh, the predictability of you know, when you when you put a constraint on your setup, you expect the results to be more to what you're thinking. And you know, that type of improvement is something we're also very aware of and we, we're, we're doubling down on that area. A lot of these things are gonna be made possible by our new solver pl platform. And uh, what this means is that you know, these, the new solver platform is gonna improve time to solution. It's gonna improve the shape quality uh, it's going to improve a lot of the UX around dealing with generative design. Um, also, just gives more of a robust foundation to the manufacturing constraints. So those are three key areas we're focusing on generative and making generative design better. Another thing that the solver enables us to do is give you more predictable symmetrical outcomes, right? So if you put symmetry on your constraints and your setup, generative setup, one thing we've heard is that the outcomes don't necessarily come out as symmetrical. So we are absolutely working on making those outcomes be more symmetrical and adhere to those symmetry rules that you've applied to the setup. And also carry that over to the, uh, the editable T-spline so that they are indeed symmetrical. We're also working on this really cool thing called fluids. <laughs> and you know what, what this allows you to do is now essentially use general design to figure out what kind of internal fluid flow and channels uh, you would need for a specific design you're, you're working on, right? So what this, this is showing, you know, the fluid design and then the underlining outcome of what that, op that fluid uh, option looks like. So this means you can define inlet and outlet. Right? You can design obstructions, right? And you can, uh, seed flow channels, and then also figure out where, where can you minimize pressure drops. So some really, really uh, advanced stuff going on. And uh, again, this is, this is going to be made possible with our new solver. So really excited to, to see that.
you, with general design, you get a, a ton of iterations and your, your job as engineers and designers is really to narrow down exactly which ones is, are right for you, right? Your job is to kill ideas and, and tease out the right one. So we want to make that easier for you. We want to give you uh, recommendations on things, on designs that lump well together as a specific package. Uh, so you'll see things like recommendations, favorites, uh, things that you can add to a favorite and then go back to if you need to revisit. Uh, so some more of those quality, quality of life uh, things. Now, one of the things when you're setting up, sometimes you don't get a sense of uh, what, what it looks like in, in the context of the assembly. And we want to give you more tools to allow you to do that, to set up constraints so that you see it in context of your assembly and you get a better idea of where you need to apply those constraints. Okay, so that was, that was a lot that we went through, but again, this will be recorded. You can revisit it and also talk, uh, look at our blog post for it. But for now, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Olivia and she's gonna go over some drawings topics. Great, thanks, ka -ching. Yeah. So um, moving into, into 2020, we, we took a step back and, and we acknowledged it's been, it was, had been far too long in between major drawings releases and so, we really aim to change that this year. We've kicked off um, 2020 with a couple of feature and improvement pack releases in May and June as we start to chip away at some of the remaining major gaps in the drawing workspace uh, that were preventing us from reaching full maturity. So what I'm gonna talk about today and as I start to um, preview some of the, the bigger projects that we're uh, working on later in the year, you're starting to see the culmination of a reinvestment process that included hiring and onboarding new development teams. They've been ramping up and you started to see those results uh, in May and June. So our focus for this year has been completing the required feature set for single part uh, detail drawings and assembly drawings. Um, and as our teams continue the development work on some of our larger projects, uh, including new view types and annotation types, um, and parts list improvements. We're also working in a collection of smaller quality of life type improvements um, and sprinkling those in throughout as well. So looking at what we just released in June, Kaching mentioned earlier uh, the sketching tools, the basic sketching functionality that we rolled out in drawings in May. We've extended, uh, extended that with the, the recent June release um, and by introducing line with control functionality uh, to support, support sketches too. So now you'll be able to control the line widths of your individual sketch entities using the sketch palette. Uh, and you can do so either before creating a new sketch entity or editing your, your line width afterwards. And you'll be able to choose between thin, medium, and thick line width. Also just add here, don't forget, we also added copy and paste support recently for text and sketches. And so you'll be able to, you'll be able to copy those and paste them uh, within, a, within a sheet and between sheets uh, to, to make those, the sketches go a little bit further for you. So along the same thing, just bringing increased flexibility and efficiency to the drawings workspace, we recently added a new creation workflow with a visibil visibility only reference option. Uh, so this is just gonna save you time that previously might've been required to select the desired components you wanted to bring into your drawing or window select to make sure you weren't grabbing things that you didn't want to include. Um, we're, we're now capturing the intent um, by looking at the visibility state of your components in the design workspace and then letting you create a drawing from what's visible. So this one is simple, but this is probably going to be the biggest change you might notice in the drawings workspace in June. Uh, you've heard from many of you over the years, and I'll be the first one to say it too, that the drawings workspace simply felt a little bit different from the rest of Fusion. And uh, the team's done a really good job going back and rewiring some of our architecture so that we can better handle the click and drag type movement that just seems normal in the rest of Fusion, but we weren't able to do so before. We think you're going to find just moving uh, symbols and tables and views around your sheet a just more, much more intuitive and pleasant experience. So now, uh, last but certainly not least, these last two improvements are uh, kind of in that quality of life theme that I mentioned earlier uh, and are actually addressing a couple of the most highly requested improvements uh, from the idea station over the years. So many of you likely know historically drawing units were defined upon drawing creation and were inflexible thereafter. 
Um, so we've we changed that. Now you we've added the option to toggle your uh, dimension linear units uh, between millimeters or inches. You can access that from your document settings, uh, which we recently moved up into the browser. And we know this is going to be a, a huge time saver for those cases where you, you make a mistake and catch it after drawing creation, or for those of you with clients with differing requirements, you'll just be able to change your units there. Similarly, uh, we want to bring you the, the kinds of flexibility that, that should just be expected. Um, so we're now allowing you to rename your section of detail views. If you need to reorder your views uh, along a sheet or across different sheets, you can um, just go in, oh, edit your view, change the name. Uh, we've added a new name field in that dialog, or you can even edit the name uh, before you even place your view as you're creating it. So those were some of the smaller improvements that we worked in for June, um, building off of the momentum. Uh, we started with the introduction of basic sketching functionality and line width control. As we start to look out the rest of the year uh, for the drawing schemes, we're, we're just determined to keep up the momentum. Um, as our, our new development teams continue to ramp up, we plan on delivering uh, on, on some of these bigger projects that you're seeing now. So this fall and winter, um, you can expect to see improvements in the areas of parts list. So um, first, we're, we're looking at bringing you all level parts list to help with your assembly drawing workflows. Um, and down the road, we're going to come back and, and work on getting you guys parts list overrides um, and things like interoperability with Excel and Google Sheets. So a lot of focus in that area. Um, we're also looking at bringing you additional view types, focus on broken views, as well as the introduction of um, missing annotations that really just didn't have any uh, super viable workarounds in the past. So um, hole and thread notes, welding symbols. We've, we've seen some of you have started to use these sketching tools to, to, to create those uh, welding symbols from scratch. Uh, we're happy. We've given you a little bit of a workaround in the meantime, but soon you won't have to do that at all. Um, section view depth control is a, is a nice improvement that, that we're uh, looking to bring out soon as well. Um, just allowing you, giving more power to that section view command um, so that you have more control over the extent of the cut that you're taking, and so you're only capturing the geometry that you intended to see in the view. And lastly, towards the end of the year, we're going to have more focus on expanding flexibility around leader and dimension styles. And so adding multi-leader leaders is going to be uh, one of our first steps there. Yeah, that's awesome. Just want to plug that we do also have a drawings roadmap that is also on, on, on our blog. So if you do want to see the kind of the status or you know where we are around our uh, around some of these projects, that's a great area to to look for. And then we also have a number of feedback hub posts. So if you mm -hmm. want to give us feedback on you know what are some of the things you need out of drawings or even anything in Fusion, our feedback hub have a lot of different areas where you can go in and give us feedback on. So uh, just do a Google search Fusion 360 feedback hub, and that should take you there. I, I have an open post right now. Actually, we're looking at getting uh, more feedback specifically around our line width control because um, we know that's something we want to come back to and um, expand upon in the future. So if you have feedback on that, um, you can find that on the feedback hub. And last plug, we also have um, our team does office hours. Um, so I think you can find a link to sign up for a schedule to chat with myself and my team um, to provide feedback or to ask questions on the roadmap. Um, and you can find that link, I think, on our public facing roadmap as well. Yep. Awesome. That's a great, uh, great ad. Uh, okay. So let's move on to Tim. All right, guys. So uh, with the time we had, I had to slice out some of the more exciting things to work on in manufacturing, but we're working on a lot of things. So I tried to add enough things where I wasn't racing through it too fast, but uh, let's, let's dive into it. And we have a lot of really good topics going on with the, um, the feedback hub as well. So sweet. Yeah, so one of our main focus areas uh, is to simplify the milling of complex feature rich parts. So we started with, by focusing on three main strategies uh, that we knew are most commonly used in, uh, in power mill. So these three strategies are five axis, uh, steep and shallow, which we've already added. And then five axis, steep and shallow uh, rest finishing, which is uh, some pretty awesome five axis steep and shallow strategies for internal corners and fillets. Uh, you would typically use pencil or uh, yeah, pencil infusion or other cam tools. 
So this is going to break out your internal corners and fillets into kind of more intelligent um, machining into steep and shallow surfaces. So you get better surface finishes, more efficient tool paths, better tool loads, things like that. And the third one is uh, five axis machining of flat, flat, uh, flat surfaces. So this will speed up your uh, flat machining on complex five axis parts. So like I said, we've already delivered the three and five axis steep and shallow, and we're making great progress on, on the other two. So, so the new tool library was just released in the June update and it brings a completely new uh, interface, uh, more powerful filtering, uh, way, way better uh, turning tool definitions. And one of my favorite uh, new features is the multiple cutting parameters per tool. Uh, now you can set up multiple cutting parameters per, uh, per tool, which, uh, which should make your days a lot, lot more productive. Uh, arguably, the more important thing to know about the new tool library is that the new code, uh, you know, the code base that, it, that it's on uh, sets a foundation for a lot of great things to come with, with the new tool library. So. So manual inspection is an interesting thing that our inspection team's working on. So you'll continue seeing uh, inspection improvements in, in probing, but this was an interesting call out. Uh, manual inspection was added in preview in the June release, and there's also a blog about it if you wanna go read more about it. But essentially manual inspection is designed to help you manage uh, inspection activities, usually using uh, manual uh, instruments such as calipers, micrometers, height gauges, uh, there's also some work with, you know, having Bluetooth connectivity and, and uh, you know, connected devices. So the new manual inspection features uh, allow you to create inspection plans directly inside Fusion 360. So having been uh, in, the, in the real industry and, and being responsible for both, you know, the inspection side and the machining side, uh, that's pretty exciting for me. Hopefully some of you see value in that. So uh, if you haven't figured out by now, I'm easily excitable, uh, <laughs> at least when it comes to, to this stuff. So I'll, I'll drop the, the how excited I am pretty often. But another new feature we added in preview in the June release that I'm super, super excited about is in-process stock or IPS. It's uh, probably worth calling out that this, uh, this started as Olivia's baby and uh and she's since moved on but it's uh it came out in the june release uh in preview and we're getting a lot of really good feedback so this caches the stock at each operation to better help you track your progress throughout programming your part uh there's there's a um a thread on the feedback hub about this we'd love to hear you guys' feedback because this really sets us in the right direction to do a lot of great work with stock management so now's a good time to be a part of the future of fusion and, and put your feedback in, in there. All right. So you're tired of hearing me talk about how excited I am, but if, if you machine anything with tool orientation or three plus one, you know, with three plus one, three plus two uh, type machining, you should be, uh, the, these are, this is making your dreams come true. So uh, we're working on what I'll call uh, tool orientation 2.0. Uh, I was a customer before I started at Autodesk, and as a customer, I love the simplicity of our positional machining, but sometimes I found myself coming up with pretty creative uh, sketches or crazy, crazy ways to make tool orientation, uh, tool orientations that weren't normal to uh, uh, the surface or, or lines or existing geometry. So as you can see here on the screen, we're working on a way to, to parametrically adjust tool orientations graphically, uh, numerically, and even add the ability to align to the current view. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, they're making really good progress on it. Uh, I, would, I would expect to see that in, uh, in preview fairly soon. Okay, so this might not be super sexy, but a lot of people have been asking for it. And what you see here is the work we're doing to allow you to select and delete toolpath segments. So uh, a lot of mold makers uh, and cavity, you know, in cavities, often you want to kind of get rid of little, little segments of, of the toolpath. So that'll be pretty useful for a lot of you. All right, here's just a hit list of the fun projects that, uh, that should add a lot of productivity to your day. So uh, we're working on a template libraries that will help you leverage the templates in a more powerful, more powerful ways. So if, you, if you're not using templates now, you should be. Um, 
And then if you are, you, you probably realize really quickly that it's, it's, it's a little unorganized and you find yourself kind of limiting how much you use it because uh, it's just a long list. So there's a lot of uh, exciting things to talk about uh, coming, coming soon. So uh, geometry selections are getting a lot of attention and there'll be some, uh, some more exciting things to talk about uh, in coming months. Uh, five axis for all 3D strategies should get all of our multi-axis people pretty excited. And the toolpath smoothing found in steep and shallow will find its way into other toolpaths. So if you haven't played with it yet, um, it's, it's, worth meant, it's worth talking about. So even point distribution. Uh, I have a Haas VF2 in my garage. I try to brag about it as often as possible, but uh, it's an old worn out machine. And I swear, uh, I've done a ton of testing in there. And I've created the best surface finishes I've ever seen in a Haas machine uh, with steep and shallow, specifically leveraging the, uh, the smoothing functions in there. So uh, NC programs will become the primary workflow. And uh, last but not least, uh, turning continues to get a lot of attention from our uh, team in Philadelphia. So uh, there's a lot of details in turning and they're, they're doing some great work over there. So uh, pay attention to what's happening here. Before we move on to fabrication, uh, I'll give you this little teaser. So uh, we have a team working hard on machine simulation and making great progress with that. Uh, we aren't ready to share uh, any release dates yet, but I'm pretty pumped about the progress that, uh, that we're working, that we've made on that. And I uh, thought it was worth a little teaser here. So. Ah. I, I, I didn't realize you added this, but that is awesome. That yeah, that was a, uh, that was a, a last minute ad. Uh, I, I got some approval and I really just wanted to upstage uh, <laughs> Olivia. So she beats me at everything. So I had to try this to pull out. Exclusive, all. exclusive for you guys. Yeah, I had to pull out all the stops to try to one up Olivia. So, so the fabrication team is working on uh, a powerful nesting tool. And in addition to nesting, we're uh, developing the new arrange tool enables simple and efficient uh, object arrangement. The, this is, I think of it as like simple nesting, but it's more about objects uh, than just nesting. So a range should show up in preview in August. So in additive, we've added uh, gyroid infill in the June release. And gyroid infill mimics uh, natural structures you'll find in butterfly wings and cell membranes. Uh, it also has an incredible high strength at low density and especially resistant to uh, shear stresses. All right, to uh, wrap it up, the things the add additive teams are working on are FFF improvements, metal powder bed supports, and uh, SLA and DLP integrations. So I can keep talking for hours and hours, but I think my time's up and it's time to hand it off to Shane to talk about the super exciting topic of data management. Ooh. Yeah, I, Tim, I sent some some sarcasm there, but I know you well, you love data management. So it's, uh, it's, it's very important topic. So I'm glad we're wrapping up with you. Well, yeah. in, in looking at the numbers of participants, I can only imagine everybody showed up to see this last part. That's why I'm last, right? Data That's management. for last, man. That's why they're still here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the, the, the next portion, you know, Tim mentioned his excitement. And it's, it's kind of hard to get excited about data management, right? But I'm going to try to do my best. I, I've been around data management for a long time. Infusion team and, and the way that we handle data, it works really well. You think about smaller teams and maybe uh, single users, it's, it's fantastic. Automatic versioning. But we also recognize with the expansion of Fusion and uh, people needing to, to work together, that we've, we've heard that we have some things to work on. So um, this, this year is a, data management is a huge priority for, for the team. Yeah, and uh, you know, that's one of the things that goes back to our first slide is maturing our existing functionality, right? This is, this is a, it's mapped straight to that. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll have to say, Shane, I, I looked at the chat and there's more, more comments about uh, data management and how it rocks. Than, uh, See, the, I told you, I told you. I tried to up, up the excitement with me. And, and you're, you're already helping answer the, the, uh, the questions, right? I'm sure. Everybody's got data, right? That's right. Uh, so taking a look at this, I, I want to talk about a few things before, you know, before you kind of dive into this, this image. 
Today, most people that are using Fusion, they know one thing, the data panel, they expand it, they create projects, they do all of their data management in, in that area. Uh, they rename, they invite, and a high percentage of our users, I would say, don't really know about that we have this other amazing product called Fusion Team. And, and that's something that we're improving. It's not discoverable. You've probably heard about it. You may not know what it is. So we're, we're, help, we're solving that by having a unified experience in a lot of different areas. So kind of think about that when I talk about this slide here. Uh, what you're looking at is one location that's, that we're gonna transition away from the data panel and expose just one location for, for everything related to your designs, your data, uh, how, to, how to create projects, even pivot out of Fusion to other areas. So this will be one, one location, uh, kind of the home tab is what we're calling it, that it is, is going to be much easier to identify where things are located and how to, how to access and collaborate. So I mentioned something earlier that one of the highest priorities is data, data management collaboration. We really have heard that through this, what everybody's going through, you know, with COVID. So I hope everybody's safe. Uh, but, but when you're outside of your company's firewall, it becomes very challenging with traditional tools to get your job done. And so people are looking at other alternatives and Fusion Team, uh, you know, is that, is that option. So we're, we're really, you know, expanding that to make sure that it's easier to use um, and, and easier to collaborate. So taking a look at this, this uh, slide here, you may have noticed a couple of things. Now, if, if you're on the latest version of Fusion, one thing that uh, if you look at your, what I call the profile bubble, uh, in this image, it's somebody's initials. So if you haven't applied one, you know, we've added that. We're leveraging that in the browser too. So if you take a look at the, the browser where the, the hierarchy of the, the parts, assemblies, whatever, you'll notice there's now this indication, let me know that, you know, I'm working on this assembly, but you know, Tim could have a part open. If you think about your existing workflows today, you may not even remember how to go to the data panel, figure out if something, somebody has it open. But what this lends itself to is being able to uh, lock the file, right? So today with, with Fusion, I open up a file, uh, Tim could open up the file, and any file that I open up is editable, okay? Which, which, is, which is huge. I mean, you could, should be able to remove some of those obstacles, but we really need to, to solve this collaboration thing. We need to have the ability to have those files protected by being locked. And uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna be able to lock the file and we're also gonna be able to show you through the browser who has that file open. So it becomes a lot easier to identify, okay, I need to go talk to Tim and figure out why he's working on that file. Is he opening it up for viewing? Is he just rotating it? Um, and kind of have that conversation. And how this works, just like everything else, you know, when Tim closes that file, the, the uh, file will become available to me to open and save and work with. So this is huge improvement over, uh, over some of the other options of having to check in and check out. This was our, this is our thought for improving that, that process. Yeah, Tim, why are you opening those files? I know, get out of my stuff. <laughs> yeah, I got a habit of opening and then like taking off for a beer and leaving them open, right? Yeah. That's right. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a few things here that, uh, that I'm, I'm working on that I'm, that I'm really excited about. One is folder security, okay? So one of the most frequently requested things I've heard through onboarding customers, creating Fusion Teams is we have this high trust environment, meaning that I create a project, I invite you know everybody to it, and I just trust everybody. I, I, I know that people are gonna delete, rename, whatever, with this ex expansion of working outside of your trusted environment to contractors or other departments, that, that kind of gets a little scary of, hey, my project, I, 
I, I don't really want to make everybody an editor. So what we're doing is um, instead of having the project and then when you create a folder, inherit those roles, permissions, users, we're going to have the ability for you to create a, a folder and have a different set of permissions for that folder. So think about, you know, I have a project, I have a folder that's, that's only for my eyes only. I can mimic this to be hidden from other people, or I can start to invite people just as to view the contents of a folder. It's going to be huge. And this is, like I said, this is one of the most requested things that, that people have asked for. Shane's really oh. just trying to limit me from, from getting into messing things up. That's right. I would just, I wouldn't even add you to my team, by the way. <laughs> no, I would. Um, so the, the other part of this image, if you look at it, is today, I mean, most people don't know how to get to our properties. You know, you right click, whatever. We're going to have a better experience for properties. And also, we've heard that people want more properties that they can control. So we're improving our, our properties. We're extending the properties uh, to make sure that people can add those, that information that's, that's going to be pertinent to their designs. And what you may notice here is there's a stock number. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the things we're doing with unifying uh, fusion life cycle and fusion team. One of them is, you know, through an extension. And this means that people will have the ability to have automatic item numbering. You know, we're, we're taking some of the features, frequently used features from, uh, from life cycle, and make sure people can utilize, utilize that inside of, of fusion. And so talking about the unification, you know, one of the things that, that is traditional is you kind of go out, you, you go into this other environment, you have to know it, it's a different interface. We hear all the time with not only managing data, but also the, your release management. People want to do that within the, the native application, so Fusion. And so we're going to have the ability to, uh, to, to control or to have visibility to what's released, what the revision is, and what the workflow looks like to release that design. Okay, so the last thing, this is just another thing that we're working on with uh, this extension is the change order. So anytime I bring up change orders or change orders or ECOs or whatever, I mean, people just, it's just one of these things that you have to do. It's typically a manual process. It's, it's something that nobody wants to track. And so we're bringing in a, a method to automate that. So you can go through a little workflow like this for your change orders, uh, your ECNs or whatever, and you're gonna be able to go through a, um, the same kind of release structure as we have with, um, with releasing designs. All yeah, right. I think that, uh, I mean, I think if we summarize, if you look at everything that we just shared, I mean, a lot of this is building in more efficiency, more automation, more, more intelligence into the product development workflow, right? Making it just easier for you to do everything that you need to do. Um, so thanks, Shane. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you for joining this session. We hope this was useful uh, and we'll continue to do more webinars. Again, thanks a lot. Thanks, Shane, Tim, Olivia for, uh, for hopping on and uh, take care, everyone. Stay safe and see you guys soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.